Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Welcome to Virtual Agent Academy. Um, today, we are joined by an esteemed colleague, David, who is a product manager on the NLU side. So, David, did you want to go ahead and get us started? Hey, Marcel, thank you very much. Yes, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, so, uh, I'll, today I'll be focusing on, let's say, getting started with entity recognition. Uh, this is part of the VA NLU um, technology. And um, before I dive into the exercise, I want to quickly go over uh, the goals for today and uh, focus on um, basically an update to the getting started pages on the community that's upcoming and um, also with some extra uh, set of references to good practice. I actually changed that name to uh, recommended practices. Um, then we will, I will be talking a little bit about understanding virtual agent entity recognition. So getting, giving you the background on what is entity recognition and why would you want to use it. Then I will uh, basically give you an exercise on, on how to use entity recognition uh, inside VA and finish off with what you should know. Uh, please note that there are always uh, a lot of resources for you to uh, get trained and updated and improve your skills and knowledge like now learning developer and the community website. I'll hint on some of these in the couple in the next couple of minutes as well. All right, get started and recommended practices. All right, so um, as we have a growing community and a lot of new articles or articles that come in from time to time, uh, it becomes quickly a little bit challenging to find the right resources for the right level. And that's why we're going to introduce like a, an index article, which basically contains all the references um, to uh, let's say the essentials. So that basically is uh, mandatory uh, food for, for anyone that uh, is going to use, let's say the virtual agent slash NLU technologies inside their um, environments. And it will focus on giving you uh, basically a good getting started setup for beginners and focuses on some um, basically recommended practices for the experts. So, um, and it's not focused just on the community, right? That's also important. It, it has references to the entire ecosystem where you find good resources, which is now learning the developer community, YouTube and the docs. And last but not least, right? We encourage uh, every each and every one of you to uh, ask questions in the community and also provide answers because uh, community is only as best as the folks that are actually providing answers and asking questions. Having said that, let's move on to the topic of today, uh, entity recognition. Uh, to give you a little bit of background, because um, uh, just to make sure that we're all starting from the same page, uh, this piece, the entity recognition piece, uh, mainly comes from uh, the interaction between VA and NLU. And natural language understanding, right, is the, the, the part where you, with, let's say, um, with normal conversational language, you can ask questions and you should get a better response or a more fluid response uh, by the VA um, agent. So uh, we talk about intents, which are part of utterances. So utterances and intent need to, utterance drive the intent and the uh, entity is part of an utterance if it's not part of an utterance, it's ignored. If it is part of an utterance and it's not mapped, it is also ignored. If it is part of an utterance and it is mapped, then you get a better user flow. And we're going to demonstrate that using the in the exercise. Okay, just an example to basically clarify what I just said. Uh, in this case, I'm uttering need a printer installed and um, the intent basically follows up as immediately picking up that apparently the 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 va 
a topic knows that uh, the printer is not available, so it immediately grabs the right topic and goes to the right part of the flow in the topic and determines that it's uh, an unavailable printer in the system and provides some guidance on it. So why did that happen? Well, that happened because of some magic. No, it happened because of entity recognition. It, it, no, it found out that used installed with printer is a combination which is both uh, matching to the entity and to the intent. So in this case, we had uh, an utterance which matched an intent and the intent matched obviously a topic inside VA. And as part of the utterance, we also had an entity and the entity value was installed and that matches the can't find the printer um, entity. Okay, um, this may sound a little bit daunting at this point in time, but I assure you that in the exercise, it will become crystal clear. Uh, just a reiterance, like if you want to see what an utterance is, so here's a collection of those utterance examples, something critical broke, can IT help ASAP and new crucial incident, those are utterances. They all map to an intent and then you could have an entity or you could not have an entity that's part of that utterance. And for example, in this case, the, the entity is urgency, which means, which translates into, let's say, Critical, that's an urgent urgency entity value. ASAP is a, an urgency entity value and crucial is an urgency entity value. That is how it's broken up. And we'll see a different example going back to the printer uh, coming up. So what are the benefits of using entity recognition? Well, uh, A, it improves the flow by reducing interactions. Uh, you create it once uh, and you reuse it for many intents. So it's, it's um, a, a reusable object and not something you have to recreate for each and every uh, utterance. And it sharpens the NLU model, improving accuracy. And that's a, a, a welcome improvement, obviously, uh, to make sure that you uh, basically, A, get a better match between the topic and the intents and also that your end users uh, have to do less uh, basically clicking or less uh, answering the, the questions that, that get replied by the agent uh, to basically zoom in on what is actually uh, intended. Um, how does it work? Well, you have to do some legwork because you have to identify the entities, right? There no, there, there's currently no one going to do it for you. Uh, in this case, you can see that everything that's underlined is uh, an entity. And we see that there are um, basically entity values, like no ink, that's the, that's the entity. And the entity value uh, that we map is no ink to no ink, ink to no ink. And toner is low is also a no ink entity mapping. And we have th three here. We also have no paper and can't find the printer. Um, and again, that, that has to do with basically the fact that we um, can reuse the entities. Uh, the entities sit at the model level and not at the intent level. So you can use them in the various intents as well. Okay, um, an example, a use case where you could actually see how we can improve the flow using entity recognition. You have the, um, the non-NLU uh, version, uh, which is the before state. And when you then ask uh, the, the chat bot or the work bot um, a question, need a printer installed, it first wants you to match it with an existing topic. In this case, you want to match it to printer issue using NLU. And then it asks you another question after you've basically asked, answered this first question, once you're in the topic, it wants to pinpoint what kind of issue you're experiencing, whether that's a no paper issue, a no ink, or I can't find the printer issue. 
if you use entity recognition, you can actually skip those two steps. And once you ask the question, it immediately is able to identify, much like I showed you earlier in that example, that need a printer install basically directly goes to uh, the right um, endpoint inside the topic. All right, uh, enough said. Uh, Marcel, I, if there are any questions, I can quickly pause here. No questions at this time, but I would encourage the audience to ask their questions. We will be taking brief pauses throughout. So um, we would love to hear from you. So please, you know, don't be shy, post your questions. All right, let me zoom out here. Okay, so um, this, uh, before I step into basically, uh, doing the full demo, I wanna make sure that everybody is on the same page. And by saying that, I mean, uh, let's look at the general settings. Uh, my NLU settings are uh, in that, at this point in time enabled, right? So I'm using ServiceNow NLU in the backend for my uh, virtual agent. And uh, in my studio, I have a Oops, that's the wrong file. No, it's the right file. There we go. Sorry about that. I have an NLU model for IT in which I have four intents, get password, reset link, email issues, open IT ticket, printer issues. And we're gonna focus on printer issues today. So as you can see, we have um, uh, the out of the box utterances. These are just um, imported from the out-of-the-box ITSM uh, NLU model, which is basically, uh, which is something that's always um, um, read only. So you have to create your own model, um, which is a good practice as well. Uh, in this case, I just imported those four and I got it started. I'm going to make sure that I train this model so that we're ready for um, the connection to the virtual agent. I'm going to publish so that I know for sure that, and I'm gonna ask a first question. Um, my printer is out of paper. I'm just gonna use my cheat sheet down there to quickly test. Okay, so I can see that in this case, the published model will pick up it as printer issues and also has uh, found an entity, no paper value. The entities that I can see is here, printer issue as you can see here, and we can quickly dive into the list that I just showed you in the PowerPoint slide. Okay, so I'm good on this end for now. Just gonna go back here. I'm gonna go to my designer and I'm gonna um, search for that print topic. Um, the print topics that come, uh, all, all the topics that come with uh, ITSM out of the box are also um, read only. So it's also a recommended practice to basically uh, create a duplicate of that. So I'm just gonna create a duplicate printer issues. There's another benefit of creating a duplicate um, because it allows you to basically test in your environment uh, without disrupting the production uh, environment, the production system, right? So you're able to start creating a new flow. In this case, we're trying to move from keyword-based uh, virtual agent to NLU-based virtual agent. And by creating duplicates, I'm able to not disturb the, the current way of working, uh, but gradually, uh, as soon as we we're entirely ready and confident that we can make a successful switch, we can just switch to the new um, set of topics. Okay, I'm just gonna select NLU for IT, uh, printer issues as my associated intent. I'm gonna save this for now, and then I'm gonna go into the topic flow. Uh, okay, this is the duplicate. And uh, typically you would start here, and I'm gonna make a small change here because this is a very large um, topic, as you can see, it's very complicated. So I'm quickly 
just wanted to highlight that you, it, it, sent, it makes a ton of sense to create a duplicate, but that's not what we want to do here. So I'm um, just going to pop out and make a simple one. So I'm just going to go back to print. Again, I'm just going to add a topic actually. I'm going to say printer issues. You just saw the, the, what you're supposed to do, create a clone of the original and then start modifying that. But in the interest of simplicity, I'm going to uh, create a simple model first. So there we go. Printer issues. All right, this has nothing. Um, and uh, similar to the, the large, already full-blown topic that you just saw, uh, I'm going to uh, fill that in, starting with a static choice. And um, I'm going to make sure that I start with printer issues. There we go. Oops. Make sure that we type in the prompt. You can't really save because you need a label. That is the first choice that you need to add. So in this case, I'm going to add no paper as a label. And that does not seem like a human readable paper. I'll, I'll get back to that um, towards uh, as we progress. But this is no paper. And then I'm going to add a decision tree so and a text where basically we say no paper. And in the condition, we want to make sure that no paper is selected. And as a response, we're going to go for a non-paper response. No paper response, save that. And that's it. Now we have created our first set. It's hooked up. Okay, I'm happy with that. And it's published, so it's active. Okay, I'm just going to start off the agent to make sure we have a fresh uh, start. And then obviously I'm gonna use my utterance to test. Ah, still gonna ask the question, that's interesting. No paper as paper issues, press printer issues. Ah, okay, I see what I forgot. Um, so what I did do is I created all the nice uh, links, um, but I forgot to enable NOU and the entity recognition um, skip confirmation step. So I'm going to go back in into my flow and I'm going to point you to the area where, where I missed. So what I forgot was to enable NOU at the input node, make sure that skip confirmation for recognized entity, because we want to make sure that if we type a test utterance around uh, something that we don't have any paper is that we actually can quickly go into this no paper response. So now I've selected the entity, I've, enabled, I've uh, activated both, and I'm going to save again, publish, start a new conversation. And now we can see that we're immediately moving to that little text piece that I had down here. So no, thank you, I'm good. So that works like a charm. So if we want to expand, we can just expand like, uh, like we would, right? We would just create another one. We could do like this. We could say no ink, for example, add no ink to the, and then have a no ink response. Maybe we should have a little text for the no ink response. And as you can guess, we do need another choice list setting here. So I'm just going to add no ink here. Oops, no ink. 
down here, no ink here. Again, not really a human readable label. Um, we'll get to that. So now we have two choices. And the only thing that I need to do now is make sure that this decision driven through to the no ink actually only takes place if printer issues is no ink. Okay, so that's important, right? You need a condition on, on these uh, leaves. All right, I'm gonna start a new conversation. My test underings will now be obviously, uh, my printer is out of ink. Oops, I did something wrong. I forgot to publish, as you can imagine. Uh, so no, I don't want to continue. Uh, yes, it's correct. And there's nothing you can help with. I forgot to publish. So um, the step that I always wanna make sure and emphasize is that you make sure that you publish. So uh, having said that, I need to do it myself as well. Let's try that again. All right, now we're seeing the, as you can, as you're experiencing ink related issues with the printer, please check all that compartments are closed. All right, we've got that one covered. So this is working pretty nicely. Um, and last but not least, we also want to make sure that uh, we have one where we can't find the printer. There is just no printer installed. So I'm gonna add uh, a response here. And actually this one is human readable. And I'm gonna show you what we should do about that moving forward. Just gonna add a leaf here and make sure that we select, can't find the printer. All right. Type there. And do that. All right. That should be it. And don't forget to publish. Okay. Um, need a printer installed is my test utterance. So I'm going to ask that to this to my bot. Hey, and he's not able to make the connection. So let's have a look in studio why that could be. So I'm gonna go into printer issues, gonna look into the utterances and um, make sure that my entities are good. So I'm gonna look at my properties, can't find the printer. Okay, so can't find the printer printer is indeed part of the list. And actually there is, where is, can't find the printer, cannot find the printer, where is the printer? Um, okay, so there may be two things that I need to do. I can't see anything with installed, so I might need to improve the, um, the, the utterances that are part of the intent. So I'm gonna add printer needs to be installed uh, as an utterance so that we can train the model. And then before I publish, I'm actually going to test. And uh, yes, it's going to find, but it's only got a 65% uh, on the entity can find the printer still. So um, if I try this in uh, the virtual agent, again, it's not going to return because it doesn't meet the threshold. Now I could lower the threshold obviously, but then I might get a lot of unwanted um, false positives, which I don't want, or I can make sure that printer needs to be installed. Installed is part of the printer issue can't find printer. So now I basically said, hey, uh, part of this utterance is actually a reference to an entity and the entity is the printer issue entity and within the printer, oh, let me just type that like this because then it will be updated. 
um, printer needs to be installed is now tied to can't find the printer. All right, so let's train again. And test again. And now we have a 100% match on can't find the printer value. All right, so I'm going to publish this. Make sure that I close off. No. Start a new conversation. And need a printer installed. And now it has a direct match to the printer that's not available. That's it in a nutshell. Um, let me quickly go back to my notes. That was the exercise. So if there are any questions, fire away. Um, what you do should know is not exactly the same training is available, but there is a free lab available through Now Learning where you can register, your instance will be provided, and you will go through all the steps uh, that includes also entity recognition um, um, on, um, in that course. So um, if you want to know more about entity recognition and you want to basically get some exercise, go to Now Learning and register yourself for this uh, lab. All right, that ends my presentation. Any questions? All right, so no questions in the chat, um, but if you find you have questions after this presentation, I would encourage everyone to post those out to our community forum so that everyone gets the benefit of seeing the question and you know it's a great way to crowdsource the answers. Um, but David, thank you again for a great presentation. It really shows the power of entity recognition on the user experience. Um, so really awesome job. And I would encourage everybody just to continue visiting the community and post your questions out there. Okay, actually I spoke too soon. Um, <laughs> we do have a question. So um, what the, the question is, what's the biggest advantage of using NLU over keywords? So David, did you wanna take that one or? Um, yes, I think uh, the, the slide in the middle basically showed it, right? Instead of having your end users um, first pick the right topic and then uh, from the topic, um, provide or basically pick the, the next um, choice, whether that when there is a choice list, um, skipping all those asks, if you already have an utterance where you basically uh, ask something which is obvious, like uh, I need a new um, external monitor to replace my old one, then um, without let's say entity recognition, you would not be able to immediately get a response like, okay, um, okay, you want the new external monitor, same as your old one, it's on its way, it should be there by end of night. No, you would first have to answer a series of follow up questions. So that's the biggest difference. Okay, great. Well, I think that wraps up our questions. Um, and I think we can wrap up for today.